Here we are on day 30, and to have a little bit of fun today, we are going, well, like you didn't have fun the whole time, but we're going to be building a game so you can have fun and play it and just have a great time. So what we are building is Whack-A-Mole, and what happens is when you run the game, you're going to get these little critters popping up in random holes at, for random amounts of time. So, and then when you click them, you get a point. You sort of have to follow it along with your mouse. So there's a couple of things we need to know here. The game itself is going to be 10 seconds long, but which hole the mole pops up in and for how long that mole peeps his head up from the ground is totally random. It's all going to be between like 200 milliseconds and a couple seconds. And then the, the mole hill that it's going to pop up from is also going to be totally random as well. So I've gone here and I've gone ahead and selected all of the holes. I've gone ahead and selected the scoreboard, which is the seven right here. And I've gone ahead and selected all the moles. So look at our HTML here. You got your holes, you got your moles in your holes, and we're ready to roll with our moles in our holes. So we first need a function that's going to give us a random amount of time between, however, minimum and maximum. So we're going to say function rand time, and that's going to take a minimum and a maximum. And that will return a math.random times max minus min plus min. And we've done this whole offset thing a couple times. Now I'm not going to explain it again. That should give us a function that if we open it up in our browser here and we run rand time, and if we go between 20 milliseconds and two seconds, it's just going to give us a random amount of milliseconds. We could probably also pop a math.round around that just so we can get a nice clean number of milliseconds back. There we go. Now we're getting a random amount of time that it's going to be popping itself up. So that's one function. That's sort of a bit of a utility. Then we need another function that's going to pick a random hole for the mole to pop up from. So function random hole. And that is going to take in a list of holes, which is going to be... Um, in our case, it's going to be this holes that we have here. However, this could be any list of DOM elements. Essentially, this is just a get me a random DOM element function there. And what we're going to do here is let's just console log holes. Now, if I were to run rand hole and pass our holes variable, we're going to get six. Why? Because holes is a node list that contains all six of our holes. Okay, good. So we need to find a random index between zero and five, which is going to give us that one. So it's a const idx math.floor math.random times holes dot length. Const hole is equal to holes idx. Why? Because that's going to be like hole zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to five. So idx. And then let's just console log the hole itself. So now if we run that function by passing it our holes, it gives us five. five. Oh, five again. That's going to be a problem for us. One, one. Oh, one again. That's going to be a problem for us. One again. What are the chances? I guess one in six. Uh, hole three, hole two. You see how it's giving us a random one. But the problem that we're running into is that Sometimes we get the same one. It's it's a one in six chance, so it's going to be pretty common. And you don't want the same the the same mole popping up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable up here. We're going to say let last hole, and that's just going to create a variable. And then down here we're going to say at the very bottom, put a line in between that. We'll say last hole is equal to hole. And what this will do is it will save the reference to what one got popped up last time this function was called so that in here, what we can do is we'll say if hole is equal to last hole, like if it was the same one that popped up last time, we'll just console log, ah, uh, nah, that's the same one, bud. And then we'll simply just run this function, random hole, again, by passing it holes. Now, this, this function here is just console logging, but that's not really what we want because we can't get the, the reference to the DOM node if we just console log it. So what we need to do here is return the hole, which is what we have. And then up here, if it was the same one, we'll just return that function 
itself, which will in turn get called. So we've got some recursion going on here, returning the whole. Now, if we rerun that, we should never get the same one twice in a row. So, oh, we got two things going on here. Why do we, oh, because we're running it and we're console logging it. That's, so this one, this little thing is saying it's returned and we're console logging. So we can take that console log out and run it. There we go, one, two, three, two, six, three, there we go. Never getting the same one. Every now and then we're getting, now nah, that's the same one, but why? Because it is, it is. in this case it was one and then I found one again, but rather than returning it, it just returned the function, which will call itself again. So if you call that a few more times, you might get a chance where it will run it more than once. Yeah, there we go. See, it ran it once. It had one, ran it again and got one, ran it again and got one, and then ran it again and got three. So we've got the running there. So we've got a random time. We've got a random hole. Oh, maybe we should rename this to random time. Keep that consistent, random and random hole. Next, what we need to do is actually get the, the moles popping up. So we'll go here and we'll make a function called peep, which is they're going to go, boop, they're going to pop up from their holes. And we will get some time, which is a random time. It's going to be between zero, 200 milliseconds and one second. And we're going to get a random hole, which will, should give us random hole. Let me pass it. Holes. So now we just console log time and hole. Let's see what we got here. Now when I just run peep, we get 450 milliseconds. Hole five should pop up. Hole four should pop up for 821 milliseconds. Hole three should be just under one second. So you see how we're getting a random hole and a random amount of time. So what we'll do here is we'll take that hole, we'll add a class to it of up, and that is going to trigger our CSS to be top zero, and that's just going to animate itself in because by default, I have put them top 100% and I put a transition of 0 0.4 seconds to pop up on it. So there we go. Let's let's try this here. Hey, hey, there he is. And we'll do it again. Hey, and again, and again, and again, and again. And you see that they are all slowly popping up. However, we don't. they don't go away. And what we need to do now is after this random amount of time, we need to remove the class of up from this random hole set timeout which is after how many seconds time and when that happens we're going to take our hole and we're going to remove the class of up no nope, not remove class just remove remove classes jquery so here we go and i would say peep and then it goes down peep again it goes down peep again Woohoo! having some fun here. Awesome. Um, then what we need to do is unless the game is over, we just need to run it again. When it's done, we'll run peep. So if you were to keep kick off peep like that, it's just going to run indefinitely because there's no way to actually stop that. So what we'll do here is we'll go up to our top and we'll create a variable called time up, we'll set that to false. And we'll go down here and we'll say, if the time is not up, then we will run peep. So if there is the variable time up is ever set to true, then it will stop. So here we go, we'll run peep. It's gonna run forever, but then we can take this time up variable. It's set to false, we can set it to true and it never starts again because it just will people will call itself and then it will call itself for the last time because this will not run. OK, that makes sense so far. Um, then what we need to do is uh, make a function called start game. So we'll say function start game. And first thing we need to do is just reset the scoreboard here just in case they're, we're playing again. So we'll say scoreboard dot text content is equal to zero. Uh, then we'll say time up is equal to false. Again, we set that on page load, I know, but if you were to run start game again, like you want to play twice, then you could do that. Um, then we want to kick off peep there. 
which will run it. So let's see here. Start game. So they're running like crazy. But what we also want to do is after 10 seconds, we want to set that variable that we time up. We want to set it to true. So set timeout. After that happens, we'll say time up is equal to true. And that will run after 10 seconds, 10,000 milliseconds. Or let, let's do it after two seconds now, just so we can see if it works. So we'll run it. Two seconds has elapsed. It no longer is running. Good. So we'll set that back to 10 seconds. So we got our start game, we got our peep, and uh, we can make a button now that when clicked, we can maybe put a button right here that says on click is equal to start game to start. And then when you click it, it will start playing the game for you. Woo -hoo. Last piece that we need is when you click on a mole, we need to bonk them on the head. So we are going to make a function called bonk. It's going to take in the event and let's just console log the event. Then we'll take all of our moles and we will listen for a click on each of the moles and we'll run bonk. Bonk. Okay, good. So now we have to get a little bit crafty with our clicking. So start it. Click. Ah, I got the first one. All right, let's take a look at this. Mouse event, all kinds of information in here. Um, first thing I want you to do is you might say, like, oh Wes, but I can fake a click with JavaScript. Couldn't I just like do that and win the entire game? Well, on all of your events, you have this thing called is trusted and it will say true. If you fake clicking something with JavaScript, that's going to be false because you can you can simulate a click, which is handy in some cases. But we need to be true that this actually came from the user's mouse input. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say if bang e dot is trusted return. And that will say cheater. So you're trying, someone's trying to fake the click without their mouse. OK, good. Uh, then what we want to do here is when someone clicks something, we got to give them some sort of score. So let's go up to the top here and we'll say let score is equal to zero. And when we start the game, we'll set score to zero as well, just so that if we restart it, we can do that. And then we'll go down here and we'll simply say score plus plus. And we will move that little guy down. So this dot class list dot remove up because if you if you smack them, they should remove down even if they have like a second or so left on the clock. And then we take our scoreboard, which have we selected that? Yes. Yes, we have document dot query selector and we'll set the text content to be the I got eight and you click start. It will run again and you can keep playing with all of your values there. So that is our whack-a-mole game. There's a lot more you could do. First of all, what would be really cool is if you had like an all-time scoreboard and you were to save that in local storage. So if someone were to come back, then you could reload the uh, the high scores and you save them in local storage. It would also be cool if you had like levels. Like this is like, I don't know, pretty clickable. But if you were to say like expert level and then you were to change this random time to like between 50 milliseconds, and 300 milliseconds and then it would be like super hard like whoa, 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 whoa. like some people will be really good at that not me but oh, i got one sweet so you could do expert mode and you can just create all kinds of different controls up here along with the dashboard and i would just love to see uh where you take this one hopefully you enjoyed that and i won't see you tomorrow because that is it i hopefully you enjoyed it and i'll have a little bit of an outro video for you as well Thanks a lot.